Hi, Whiskey Hobbit here, and today I'm reviewing something a little bit different. This is a Weechy Sweet and Sherry, oh sorry, Sherry and Sweet. Um, it's a distillery exclusive, so you can only get this at your Weechy distillery, which from what I understand isn't in the easiest, almost, it's not the closest place to any of the most well-known and touristy places in Japan. It's right at the top of Japan. Um, but yeah, Yuichi is something I've always liked and enjoyed and thought was very good. I mean, I've tried the Yuichi 10, which I gave a review of a little while ago, which was very nice. I personally kind of prefer the new Yuichi a little bit more. I think it it works a little bit better. But um, it's one of those distilleries that's very hard for to get to. But I really want to go. Like, really, really want to go. Um, it'd be absolutely amazing. But... Um, Anyway, my manager at Raw Mile Whiskies bought me this um, as a sort of present when he was in Japan. Um, I mean, it's bottled at 55%, so it's not a weak spirit. It's pretty full on, because normally Yuichi is 45%, and they did, before the current non-age statement one, they released one another non-age statement one that had a slightly uglier bottle and a bit more short and... It was 50 CL, and that was 43%. So, normally they're not particularly strong. I must say, this is lovely, because the sherryness does come through. It is quite a kind of candied fruitiness. It's got a lovely colour to it as well. Not that that really matters at all, but yeah, it's quite nice. Um... It does smell very nice. You do get a little hint, just a hint of peppery smokiness, just a, just a little bit. Almost like someone's cooking in the background and it's some sort of um, kind of like spicy smoked meat. That's the only way I can describe it. Oh, it does smell really good. A little bit bananary as well, which you do sometimes get with um, Yuichi, like a lovely kind of sweet banana. Okay. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh, that is quite tart. <laughs> The sherry note comes through really nicely, actually. It's a very heavily sherried whiskey, if I'm honest. It's kind of like Glendronach tweaked, just a, just a little bit, and it's just very intense, very sweet, plum, raisins, fruitiness coming through. A little bit kind of hazelnutty as well, but just super sweet, like someone's just thrown a bomb... A cherry bomb in your face. It's nice though, um, but I think that might be more the alcohol strength than anything else. Kind of overpowering the palate. It's. I don't think it's particularly old. If I was going to guess an age, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, nine, ten, maybe. That's that's me being awkward about it. I, I don't really know how old it is um, and there's no way to def find out. I mean these these bottles, the distillery exclusive ones, sell for quite a lot of money at auction and yet you can buy them for not that much when you're in Japan. Um, well, I, I don't know how much but from what I understand it's certainly nowhere near auction prices. I think I've seen a bottle this size go for something like 50 to 60 pounds <laughs> it's it's that you know it's ridiculous really i i if i'm honest i'd like to see more things like this nice statement fun things from yuichi they've done um a yuichi and miyagi q kind of set that was in 2017 so like late 2017 is when i saw it and early 2018 uh which was a miyagi q and yuichi rum cask one which was <laughs> About three hundred and twenty pounds or so. It's quite expensive, um, to be honest. And for what it is, I did get to taste it a while ago. 
it's very nice. <laughs> it's sweet and fruity and juicy, but it's, I, yeah, not really worth it at all. But, you know, it's annoying because I like Yuichi and I like miyagi Q. I think they're very good distilleries. And I think if given enough time, I think once they've had enough time, they're going to start doing more age statements. i just like to see as much from them as possible, to be honest, because you, Japanese whiskey, certainly now, is very hard to try much of at all without spending huge amounts of money. Um, Scotch-wise, there's so much and so many independent bottles and things. If you find an independent bottle of Japanese whiskey, it's going to be crazy money, absolutely crazy money. And the standard stuff that they've got is also very expensive. So it's difficult to really, in, you know, buy a bottle of Japanese whiskey and really appreciate it for what you've got, if that makes sense. It's, it's not really price-wise and availability-wise. I don't think Japanese whiskey at the moment is in a good place. Um, and also quality. It, it's, I think Yuichi does very, very well, as does miyagi Q. Really good whiskey. Um, the Hakushu non age statement one from Suntory is quite good. But generally speaking, the non age statement whiskies from Suntory I'm not a huge fan of. The Yamazaki and Hibiki are pretty bad. Um, I'm not going to be reviewing them because I don't have them and I don't want to have them. Um, the Hakushu's nice, yeah, it's good. Um, but I don't think it's worth the money again. So. Yeah, Japanese whiskey for me is in a kind of unfortunate place where I'm just waiting for it to get to a point where all the distilleries have enough aged whiskey to start releasing it and maybe at a slightly more reasonable price. But if I'm honest, I'm not sure once they've got enough aged stock that they're going to necessarily reduce the price. I think, I, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do, to be honest. It'd be interesting to see what happens um, in the next couple of years. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, I, I was surprised that so, I mean, since I've been into whiskey, every single Japanese whiskey with an age statement that I liked has been discontinued. The only one that hasn't is the Yamazaki 12, which I'm not that bothered by. It's nice, but I don't really care for it. And if you find it, it's about £100. If you can't find it, it'll be at auction for about £150. And when I first got into whiskey, I could have bought it for fifty pounds. I it's the same stuff, but people are stupid and think, well, I've got to have a bottle. It must be good. It must be. Or they just want it for their collection or something. I don't really know the reason for why people want it that much. I jumped on the bandwagon for this in one respect when I found some Hibiki Twelve that wasn't too expensive. I thought well, I, should, I should probably get that. And I did, and it's now worth about three or four times as much as I... No, sorry, four to five times as much as I spent on it. Um, so, yeah, if you, it's annoying, and I don't like it because it's, 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 what, it's now just the whole selection of Japanese whiskey. As soon as you get anything for, from Japan with an age statement on, and it's all matured in Japan and all made and matured and properly made and matured in Japan because there's a couple of Japanese whiskies coming out that say they're 8 or 12 not from Nikka or um, Suntory and it doesn't seem like they are aged for that long it doesn't feel like they're definitely that old um, if I'm honest I think there's a little bit of confusion there like mixture of whiskies from different places maybe with different ages it's not really something that i'm too sure on it's it's a bit weird because even the people i work with were a little bit confused as to why or how they had a i think it was an 18 year old i was like no no no, no you don't have 18 year old yeah um japanese whiskey no it doesn't work <laughs> um It'd be a much bigger thing if it was fully Japanese, if you see what I mean. That, that's all I mean. So with the water, I've given it a little bit of time. It's kind of uh, gotten a little bit more melony, green, fruity sweetness to it. 
kind of like almost kiwi fruitiness. Pears, yeah. And a nice kind of creamy melon. Creamy, creamy, eh, cre creamy banana. Creamy banana, yeah. Lovely. It's actually got a hint of smoke to it. Originally, I only got the smoke in the nose, not the palate. The water's brought out a little bit of that. It's made it, a, it's still very spicy um, and juicy. It's, a, it's quite dry. It's got quite a dry dryness to it. And it's got this um, sort of uh, nuttiness that just kills anything else, any flavour. It just just at the end, it just comes through, and then all you're left with is this kind of dry nut sweetness to it. It's really nice. If I was going to give this a malt mark, I would give this. I'm um, I'm going to say uh, eight point. Eight, eight point seven, that sort of range, out of ten. Um, it's very good. I'm very happy with it. But um, yeah, and I mean, the full bottle would have been lovely. But uh, and if if I got it at the distillery, um, yeah, buy don't buy it at auction if I was you. Um, just don't. It's not worth it. But um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next time but it'll probably be another scotch of some sort so yeah until next time